What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of Best the Women's Best. Boxing Show, period. It's been a long, long weekend because we had a lot of boxing. I am Cynthia Conte, first of all, and my beautiful co-host. And I'm Giandra LaBeouf, and I am back here <laughs> in Vegas, and I still have braids. Uh, you do? I, I like it. I still have braids. Thank you. you it's time to take it. it out. You know, it's looking a little... But well, we're going to get it redone. When you do your braids again the next time, because I know you're going to rock them again, do you, do you ever tell your braider, I want this, and then she does something else? Every time. She oh. tells me, <laughs> I tell her one thing, and then I leave complete with something completely different. And then I'm like, that's not what I asked for. And then I'm like, oh, it looks better. Then I don't like know it. what I'm talking about. I love it. <laughs> we love it. Exactly. I love the green on you. It pops. Thank you. Green for the money, gold for the honeys. Oh, and I'm wearing my butterflies because I don't know if people know. I don't really talk about it. My sister had breast cancer. Shout out to your sister. Ooh. For the women out there, double mastectomy she had, so hopefully she's cancer free. Amen. We're gonna pray. Oh, I already crying off the top of the show. But anyways, um, there's no crying in boxing. Uh, Jay, we had some great fights. We had some predictions. Mm -hmm. We kind of knew what happened with Devin Haney. We didn't give the prediction of the rounds of who was going to win, but we knew Haney was going to win. Um, did not care for the scorecards. Not at all. Shit. Um, I don't know who gave it. I don't know how they gave it four rounds. People, people. I had some boxers that were on my timeline said, I don't know how everyone's giving it a shutout to Haney. And I'm sitting there, okay. So to be fair, I didn't see the fight live. I saw it after, so I'm sitting there, okay, I wanna understand why these judges gave it this, why people are giving it this, why people are giving it that. I gave Cambosos maybe two to three rounds at best, and three rounds is very, very forgiving. Mm -hmm. What did you give him? I gave him about two rounds. I felt like Haney boxed his head off Fuck the yeah! entire fight. He jabbed him to death into submission. That crowd was quiet the entire time. You know, we have people there. Our boy Steven, shout out to KO Artist Sports, was uh, live in Australia yeah. for the fight. And it was just, he took the heart completely out of Cambosas. He had nothing for Haney and good win for him. It was I a really disputed. good win. It was a, a beautiful boxing masterclass. Yes, it was. Yeah. And you know, he's the undisputed champion now. People can stop calling him. <laughs> the stop e calling yeah. that man the email champion. <laughs> he went there and did what he needed to do. And now he's undisputed. Mm -hmm. And this new crop of young men are really taking over and running the game. So salute to him. It really is. And who knew it would be Devin Haney, the email champ, no longer. And he's already owned up to it. He's like, I'm the email champ, but I am undisputed. There is no dispute in this story. So, so what happens now with this franchise champ? Business. You know what, Mauricio, we've had many conversations about this from the WBC, the president. This, uh, I know, I think maybe uh, Juan Estrada is the only one that has it right now. I don't know if Canelo has taken his, his has taken the title because I remember that they gave it to him. Right. And the whole purpose of the WBC franchise is to have no mandatories. I understand that. So you can go be great and go to different uh, uh, weight classes and go do what you need to do. But you have to also understand there's other people waiting in line. The mandatories are sitting there picking their noses. They want to get a chance at uh, at the belt. Exactly. So I really hope that uh, the WBC, Mauricio, and all the people there, and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a WBC ambassador, so I'm really hoping that they'll really take a look at this to see what kind of a mess it really caused. Because, you know, when they called George Cambosos undisputed, Theofimo was undisputed, but De Devin Haney had the belt, the WBC belt. So... I don't know. I mean, the, apparently the franchise belt or franchise title trumped over the belt. So I wasn't a fan of it. I wasn't a fan yeah, of it at yeah. all. It just kind of made everything an already messy situation with tons of belts, tons of champions, tons of things and that. Just another distraction. So yeah. I'm glad that it's set, all said and done. And uh, again, salute to Devin Haney. I know. And Good Haney stuff. Camp. And Bill Haney came in last minute. What a beautiful trip. I mean, it was so it was so beautiful to see on the Top Rank uh, video when he first came in. I was like sitting there honestly crying. It just it was like it was like a movie. <laughs> it was. I mean, you know, this is one of the those times I mean you know I'm poor y'all know I'm poor I'm from the hood and I'm glad it wasn't on pay-per-view but it would have been dope to have like an all access or yeah. something like yeah. that to see like them reuniting and just the emotion of I don't it think there was that. time though because it was like the 11th hour I mean I would have popped up with my cell phone shot it well they yeah they they did have people but they edited it and um he, I think uh Devin Haney was getting his hair done getting it uh, cut right before, and he walked in, uh, his little sister, his, and um, I think his 
I, I don't know if it's step I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but just a lot of other people came. But luckily, I did read that from um, Corey. I don't know. I, I, sorry, Corey. I don't know how to say your name. Is it Erd, Erdeman? I don't know if you know him. But oh, yeah, yeah. He, Corey, yeah, he was on the scene. call. Yes. Uh, he wrote a beautiful story on Boxing Scene today about the whole thing, like coming up to that time when Devin Haney, I mean, excuse me, Bill Haney showed up. And uh, he was just like, just stay calm, stay calm. And I love in the corner, he was just like, keep that jab, stay focused, don't get too aggressive. Just, you know, you all, you see other trainers like screaming at them and it, he was so focused. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they ever said in Cambosos' corner, um, you're losing on the cards. But because apparently to them, they said, you're out punching him or you're out landing. And I'm like, what fight are they watching? I, yeah. I don't understand, but it's all right. There's okay. gonna be a rematch. Oh, <laughs> We're you like, know ah. what? Here's you know a little boxing history. This is my camera. A little boxing history. The irony of them not letting uh, Bill Haney into Australia. <sighs> Australia was a penal colony. For those of you who didn't pay attention in history class, I did not. It was a place <laughs> for prisoners. It was like a giant jail when really? it was when Australia was in. It was literally a penal colony where they would send people from other countries like to incarcerate them. So the irony that they have these strict laws about what? that the man paid his debt to society once you pay your debt to society then that's it yeah and that's like 30 years ago yeah yeah i don't know if the guy um, i don't know who is this cut man i know he couldn't get into the country because he did not disclose that he had a conviction but mm -hmm. i'm not sure who was in the corner to wrap him i don't know if he ever got in but mm -hmm. kudos to him let uh, us know in yeah. the comments was yeah. it gamesmanship that they didn't let him in was it mind tricks it, ultimately it didn't matter and the, yeah. the crowd was heartbroken and a rematch is going to be very hard to sell because it's but you know what contractually know. lou de bella top rank uh peter his uh manager uh cambosos they put that shit locked in it's another good payday it's another good day for boxing in australia which i think is great mm -hmm. the not do, after what we saw with the rematch, because we always say it depends on how the first fight goes. That's how it's going to sell for the se second fight, unless Cambosos can learn how to box uh, Devin Haney's ass off or try to close the distance and try not to get in a firefight because Devin Haney knew not to get in a firefight with Cambosos, and that's exactly what he won, but it did not happen. So Shout out to Australia, yeah. but Manny Pacquiao won that fight against Jeff Horn, y'all. <laughs> damn straight right you know that's what i saw in your tweet i'm like i don't know what she's talking about i'm like i thought maybe tim <laughs> my boo high to my filipinos out there. my boo high all right well <laughs> on to the next we got some great guests we know we don't have just one but we got two guests in studio yo we were we've been talking about this jay when we saw her She's a trainer. She's not just a trainer. She's her son's trainer, a professional trainer to Dennis Duglin, Mama's Boy. We got Mama in the house herself. Woo! Sophia, yeah. right? Sophia. 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 God, I, you kept saying it. And I'm like, I keep thinking Sophia. Sophia, and we have Dennis Duglin in the Woo! house. Woo! Woo! Thank you guys so much for having us. No, this show is dope. Thank I love you. your energy already. I love the little recap I just did. <laughs> Do. Yeah, I dope. mean, because that's the whole point. We just don't talk about hair, nails. I mean, we could. Can I jump in on what y'all was saying? Of about? course. Yeah, First please. First thing, they did tell Campbell's in the corner that he was losing. So shout out to his corner. Oh, for he me. did? Okay. They did. They right. Did like I said, I did not watch yeah, the fight live. I was just like scrubbing, So scrubbing. I did appreciate the coach doing that because a lot of coaches don't do that. They had their fighters going in yeah. thinking they winning. He was letting them look, bro, you losing. So, <laughs> so that was dope. Secondly, with the Bill Haney thing, first off, shout out to Devin. I'm a big fan of Devin. Bill, you stole me money. I mean, money, money. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to Devin. I mean, Devin is great. Um, I love that they were able to flip the narrative to make um Bill coming out there mm -hmm. such a big deal. And yeah, I, I love I love that that they they use that to to show how important fatherhood is in a black community. And how Amen. So so that was dope. Um. I don't I don't like that people are saying, oh, Bill did something. Actually, he did what any great father should do, Absolutely. which is make you make your way out there. So I do love that. I don't want to say like he did anything over the top, but I'm glad he was there for his son. Yeah. I think Devin looked amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really agree with y'all. I don't want to say rematch, but Campbell's actually yeah, it's and and you know what? Campbell's could have just had an off night because he did look like he didn't do anything. He didn't know how to get past the jab. So, I mean, in his post-fight press conference, he did say, I was landing. I thought the fight was close. 
I mean, so I'm, I'm not kidding you. There are there were professional fighters on my timeline. I was reading because I was not watching the fight live because I was on a plane. They said, I don't know how people think this is completely. Yeah, we're not going to name no yeah, names. Yeah, I'm not going to name names. <laughs> <laughs> but they're just like, this nah, is a really out. close call, fight. Call them out, so buddy. maybe, you know, it maybe to they're professional fighters. So they're seeing something that I'm not seeing or right. she's not seeing or all these other media people. So that's why I don't know. But you just said. Did you think Devin won by a landslide? Easy. I think okay. maybe the second round was competitive. Yeah. And then after that, like, it was just, I mean, um, Kimbo's had moments, maybe like a five-second clip in the midst of a three-round mm -hmm. dominant round. Yeah. Just, but, yeah, there was no, like, Devin clearly won that fight to the point where it's like, I don't want to see a rematch because, like, he wasn't hurt at any point. And Kambosis landed. I remember it was a good right hand to the yeah, top of yeah. the temple. Mm -hmm. Devin ate that. Boom. Kept coming forward. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he showed me nothing to make me feel like I want to see it again. You know what I'm saying? But who knows? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, imagine Kambosis wins the rematch. Let me. So tell that me. That would be great I, for boxing. Damn. That would be great for boxing. Uh, great for the sport. Yeah. But what is the least desirable rematch? Usyk Joshua, which also was a dominant win, or. Haney Cambosos, which is a dominant win. Which is least, what would you least rather see? I would least rather see the Haney and Cambosos yeah, because there's yeah. so many other fights for Haney to take that we want to see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Ryan that, Garcia, that, Tang, yeah, like those classes, four kings. That area is so dominant. Like, I want to see those fights. So, why are we wasting time with this? You know what I'm saying, like you said, we got Shakur, oh, Tank, yeah. Garcia. Um, there's just so much boxing is lit down there. So Shakur wants to first uh, unify with uh, or become undisputed. Oh, Cordina over the, over the just pod. had that yeah. had that massive knockout. Shakur's not losing to anybody in my Shakur opinion. is nope. brilliant. Shakur's not losing. Yeah, he's brilliant. going. Yeah, yeah. He he's I'm. Shakur is one of those kids that just he keeps getting better and better That's and better. Fact. That Absolutely. jab, the movement. Okay, Safaya, yes. tell us, did you watch the fight? No. No. Do you watch boxing? <laughs> yes. What do you like to watch? What kind? Who, who's your favorite fighter besides your son? My son is not my favorite fighter. Oh. Oh. Sorry, Daddy. Oh. Who's your favorite fighter? He's, he's, you, he's like, let me take he's the like, note over right now. This <laughs> is canceled joking. for this now, let me year. Tell you though, let me tell you about this. This was a couple years ago when I sparred Kayla Plant for the first time. <laughs> she was a huge fan of Kayla Plant. So still, still. Oh, still. still a huge fan of Kayla Plant. Oh my gosh, the groupie love. <laughs> We had him on the he show. We should have known. Yeah, guest. he was our first really? guest of our yeah. first. Yeah, I would have, we would have invited you to come hang out. She with was us. like, she was like, Dennis, I'm not playing. Make sure you move your head. This boy is sharp. I'm like, I'm like, calm down. She's like, yeah. <laughs> so That's I dope. do. Yeah, it is. It is. So I do know that she does. Like, she's definitely a fan of boxing, and she does have fighters that she watches. Because I've been in room with some guys that are supposed to be really good too, and she was like, Nah. Go, go be his boy. <laughs> but then there's some fighters I see, like, I got to respect certain fighters because of her respect. Even on last week, we just sparred um, Carlos Adams. Mm -hmm. He's a really yeah. good, he's really good. He actually beat me up last week, so I need that back, Carlos. Yes, he beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> but before the sparring, she actually called it. She was like, listen, we've been watching. You're going to be dumb, which I'm actually did. No, I said foolish. <laughs> No, you didn't say fool. You said, I'm gonna, fool. Be, you said I'm gonna be a fool. It's like, watch this fool go in the ring and try to fight him instead of boxing him smart. I'm mad she said that because that's what actually what happened. Ah, uh, they know. Brilliant so trainers. Like yeah. It, but I feel like she, if she worded it a different way, it wouldn't have happened. Nope. No, she's very blunt and she honest. She worded it the way she's it not to be She's not pushing. She's not. He did exactly no. what I said he was gonna do. This is how I feel about exactly. the, This is how I feel about our, I feel like our words are powerful. So if you say to me, hey, Dennis, listen, I know you're typically inclined to go to war with this kid. <laughs> no, you just want to. <laughs> hear what you want to hear. Don't go to yeah. war this time. Box, <laughs> but, but she was like, this fool going to go Do you so, normally speak like that? You know, oh. son, you would be more inclined. No, 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 I'm trying to get I'm trying to get He's her trying like to that. change I'm me. I'm trying to get her like that. It's not going to happen. Be you, mama. Like, be you. Yes. No, but listen, this, this is how I, as my coach, I got to talk to my coach as what works for me. Mm -hmm. as my, you know what I'm saying? Like, outside of the mother-son thing, we have to work, I understand, like, I do really good with positive reinforcement. I'm not, I'm very... I don't do good with security, with authority. So if you try to tell me what to mm. do, I'm gonna I'm gonna argue it. You know what I'm saying like so I've been like that since a kid. You know Especially saying? female authority. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, how do you guys do that? Because we've seen the father son dynamic, and we've seen some of it doesn't really work out. Uh, we've seen um, I, I've, we've never seen a mother son dynamic until you two. So how does that how does that work? It works differently each time. It depends. Like I knew that I know how he is. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, that's my closest 
we're close. So I know everything about him. So I know his personality. I know what he's going to react to. I know how he's going to react depending on the situation. That particular day, the gym was lit. A lot of people were in there. It was packed. He's the showboaty type of person, too. And then he gets in his head when it comes to people being around because he always wants to impress people. You know, yeah. and I told him today, you need to just learn how to impress yourself. You don't have to impress anybody mm-hmm. because everybody knows that you have big balls. They know you get in the ring, you do what you have to do. You've been in the ring with some of the best boxers already. You don't have to impress mm-hmm. anybody. So I was watching the guy that he was sparring for like two weeks. He, he, he'll he be in a phone booth and he'll be just pounding on you or he'll back you up. And he that's all he wants to do. So if we already know that. Why go in there and do that? You know, take now, you know, all you have to do is outbox him because he's not going to box. He's going to fight. So just go in there, and I said it, and he went in there and did exactly. This is the first time ever, I think, that I ever stopped a sparring session. Really? Yes. Wow. Wow. I never, I, I, I never. We share I, a brain. I, yes, I've, ne- I've, never, I've never, I've never done that. It's interesting too because I was fine, but I'm glad she. Now that it's over, I'm glad she did stop because I wasn't in the right headspace. Mm. Um, the headspace was to just box him, keep him on the distance outside because it's easy to fight out there. But when I jabbed once, I, I stepped in, it was working. I was doing, I'm just boxing beautifully. I jabbed in no one time, and he timed it through a hook. The hook landed. I thought it was an ugly hook, and I was annoyed that it landed. So I was like. Work. So that that's what got me in fight mode, and then it went it went left from there. Trust that, the trainer. Yeah. So when you do get in that fight mode because you got hurt, you got hit. I didn't get hurt. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got hit got the hit. way you didn't like. I didn't like it. So when your mom is your trainer is telling you to do certain things, does that go in one ear and out the other because you want to do your own thing? See, mm. it, it doesn't typically, and that's why I'm saying like it, it depends on my energy. Like, so I'm a very I love fighting. Like, I'm a fighter, but I'm a lover, so I'm having fun. When I'm in the ring, I'm smiling, dancing. So I like to stay in that energy. When I get mad, I black out, and it's like that in real life too. Like when I that's get, normal. That's yeah, a lot of people. I black out, so I try to keep myself from getting mad. Cause when I get angry, you, I don't listen to anybody. <laughs> so. When I'm doing well and I'm having fun and she's talking to my hair, everything she's saying, we have fun, we dancing, it's great. When I get angry, that's when I got to focus on, I got to really lock in. I don't hear anything. I just see black and I see the person in front of me. So that's kind of where it got. She takes that as me disrespecting her. She'd be like, you wouldn't do that if I was a man. But I probably would. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it, has, it has nothing to do. I just don't hear her at that point. Honestly, I just, I only see what's in front of me. So it's something I'm working on within myself is just trying mm. to always stay relaxed, always stay calm, even when I get hit with a shot. Because I wasn't hurt, but it was just a shot that I didn't like. You know what I'm saying? Like, he threw, I threw a jab. My jab was nice. Like, don't hit me with a hook, bro. Look what's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, got I like how you want your punch selection yeah, selected. Exactly. <laughs> like, my joint was good. He timed it. It was an excellent hook. It was well-timed hook. My hand was down. I was mad that I was mad at myself for keeping my hand down. I'm mad he landed the hook. Then I looked at his face and he kind of like smirked, like, huh? <laughs> he, some, probably oh, some, he probably didn't. He probably did. He probably did. <laughs> he was already mad. He was so already he's gonna already mad, see so, other so, things. In my head, he smirked. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh it's funny. Oh, it <laughs> so, so tell me this. So, how does the gender roles play in this? As a mother trainer, you know, women typically are the nurturers mm-hmm. in, in the dynamic. When you're the trainer, can does he still come to you for nurturing? In addition to education and enlightenment as its trainer. Ooh, and his mother. Good question. Yeah, that is a good question. Ooh. I think that's the first time I've put her or anyone's asked that. Because yeah. she, she knows. <laughs> She's so smart. I respect oh, the guy. She's my yin to my yang. He, he does. <laughs> he does, and he does a little bit more now because he's changed a lot in the last couple of years. So his nurturing is that way of him saying, talk to me nicely, be nice, positive, reinforcements, that kind of stuff. That's the nurturing side he wants me to bring out. As far as being the trainer and the mother, so he does do that now, and he expects he expects that from me, and I I get it now, because maybe I used to try to be like, no, well, I just yeah, want to be a trainer, I think- and I wanted I don't want to be that person, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, because then it takes away from me being a trainer, you know. So maybe with him explaining to me how it makes them feel, you know, he watched other corners and he says they're relaxed, everybody's. Even when you see people sparring and they're not doing good, their trainers are giving them positive reinforcement regardless. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what he wanted me to do a little bit more. So that's the nurturing part that I, ha- I now do. I want to take it good. way back. Mm. So when obviously he goes into boxing, mm-hmm. was your thought... Um, I want to be your trainer. Oh no! Like, how did this? How did this? How boxing. did that relationship even happen? That you become his head trainer? 
Can I tell a story? I love telling <laughs> All right, so, boom, I'm, I'm going to tell the whole story. I'm going to oh, take it back. Boy. I was eight years old. So, in school, I've always been, like, the popular kid. I've always had, I'm, I've been blessed, where girls always like me, so that's been cool. Pimpin', and, um, pimpin'. You feel know? <laughs> So, I've always been a popular kid, and that's been a blessing. So, um, I was in school at eighth grade. I was eight years old. It was a, a 10-year-old little girl that liked me, which was dope. Ooh, was older that's female. A big deal. You're third grade and a fifth grade like you? That's a big that's deal. Lit. You feel me? <laughs> so this fifth grade girl liked me. This fifth grade boy that liked her was upset about it. So he started talking crazy, and he attacked me. I was like, bro, like, whatever. The big fight over girl, you corny? Whatever. So we fought. I threw him down, so I thought the fight was over. It was my first fight. I thought the fight was over, so I tried to walk away. He got up and, like, put me in the headlock, threw me down, like, ripped a hole in my pocket, and my money fell out, like, $3, took my $3. So I was soft. I was easy. I came home crying, like, I got beat up today. Like, any help? She was like, yo, you a punk. <laughs> You know, we from we from Brooklyn, so you know, she wanna she wanna tough her son. She like you're a punk. And at the time, my uncle my uncle was already a boxer. <laughs> yeah, this man, this is real life. I'm really crazy. I like your mom. Really, yeah, really, she like, oh, you saw so I. You know what? My friend just opened a gym, a box gym. I wanted to start boxing anyway, so I'm gonna take you to go box with me. So I'm like, okay, this sounds fun. Me and her were always close. My my family is really close. Me, my my parents, my sister, my little brother, we're all super close. So she was saying, and then me and her. Always had like a really special relationship. So when she was like, let's go box together, I didn't even look at it as like a punishment. It was kind of cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. Although I didn't really want to box. I'm like, whatever, we go to the gym. So I went to the gym with her um, at eight years old. I didn't really like it, but it was cool. So I was only going on Saturdays. And we went in for like four months. And I kind of got good at this little Saturday <laughs> joint. Then another little kid started coming, but he was coming every day. He was kind of annoying. Cause Let me you... guess, you were competing with him. I of course. <laughs> okay, He's like, 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 I'm coming every day I'm too like, now. I'm like, I'm like, why are you here every day? Like, calm down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> So in like two months, in two, like two months, he's getting ready for a fight now. I'm not getting ready for no fight. I'm just here with my mom. But they put us to spar, and like, oh. and this little boy beat me up. And I'm like, hold on, I've been here for like four months. He's been here for like a month and a half, and he beat me up. His name was Jeffrey. How you doing, Jeffrey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was consistent. <clears throat> He was. So I told him, I think I beat up though with something that's very interesting. I learned a lot about myself. I learned that. I'm competitive, like so. When yeah. I got, I'm like, oh no, we gotta come every day now. I wanna, do, I'm gonna spar him again. So we started coming every day, spar him again, beat him up. I like boxing, so let's fight, whatever. So that was that was it. She wasn't my trainer. I had a trainer. Everything was good. I was like 12 years old, and the trainer goes, "This your son is lazy. I don't want to train him no more." Oh. Mind you, I'm the best fighter in the gym. Wait, I, why did he say that about you? Yeah, what were you over I mean, here doing? Were lazy. you? Was lazy. Were you lazy? Was, he was lazy. Was oh, okay. So the because minimum. I, because I really didn't want to do it. I was just doing it to compete with this Jeffrey kid. Oh, got it. Now that I beat Jeffrey, I mean, I really, I'm just doing it just to do it. So Jeffrey was your motivation. Jeffrey basically. was my motivation. Wow. Was my motivation. He was. I don't know if hmm. he ever knows. I hope he's. I hope he's following me on Instagram. Does which, he know his, he Jeffrey's does. last name? I don't know his last name. Do you remember Jeffrey though? It We're was, gonna tweet him. That happened with Nicki Minaj recently. She was talking about somebody she had an issue with, and the girl tweeted her back. About that's dope. Them wow. getting I would, a fight I would at a love party. to hear from this kid, or oh, this grown man, because he was a little older than me. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear from him because yes, he's the reason. One of the main reasons I'm boxing okay. was to beat him up. So it's dope that 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 kid had that kind of effect on me at that early age. We gonna start the campaign. Hashtag find Jeff. Find yeah. Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey. Hashtag you find Jeffrey. Right. Where you at? Where sure. you at? You responsible it's for two, a whole career. You know, it's two kids. Now that we talking about, it's two kids that are responsible for me loving boxing. It's Jeffrey and it's Aris. Is that the girl? Aris no. is a boy. Okay. Aris was another. He was a kid that I looked up to. He was like the best. He was I good. Was, he was really good. And um. I was like 10, he was 12, and he was like the star of the gym. So it was kind of cool. I wanted to be like Aris. Um, he stopped boxing. Wait, get I, back to your story about your mama. Okay, back yeah. to mom. <laughs> I was like, well, we, why, we want to so, know. <laughs> so we switched gyms. We started training with my uncle. That was dope. I learned a lot from him. And she was just always in the gym, too, working out. Okay. And she would watch me spar or train, and then she would put me to the side like, hey, you kept chopping your jab. You need to keep your left hand up, your right hand up. You keep getting hit on that side. I'm like, okay. This was in Gleason's gym. In Gleason's. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Shout then, out to Larry. He's boxing inside Then, then we would go home and she would be like, you know what? Let's work on those. So she would like give me like makeshift pads in the house, fixing my stands, fixing things she saw. It was cool. It was a little bonding moment we had. It was dope. Then when we were 16, we moved to Jersey. So I couldn't train my uncle anymore. And I needed a trainer. So we wanted to go look for trainers. And I was like, well, while we're doing that, why don't you train me since you've been doing it at the house anyway? So she's like, okay. So we started training. 
we go to gyms, I'm beating anybody up, and she's in my corner. And then it becomes like a thing because like she goes in my corner and people are laughing at me at first. Yeah, it became a joke. Because yeah. like, your mama, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Like, that, yeah. Who, he was little, embarrassed too. Who's little boy coming in with his mom? Like, this is yeah. crazy. So I feel like that put a chip on my shoulder because now I got to beat you up because now you're laughing at me thinking I'm going to be sorry. <laughs> so I feel like that chip happened for both of us because I feel like, oh, I'm sorry. I feel like that chip happened for both of us. She wanted to prove that she was just as good as the guys. I wanted to prove that I was just as good as these kids with my mom. So that became a thing, like us going to gyms and beating people up. And um, she still wasn't like officially my trainer. We were still looking for a trainer. The guys would help me here and there, but she was always in my corner. Then we went to um, a regional tournament, and in the finals, I was finding somebody that was really good. In the finals, the crowd started randomly chanting "Mama's Boy," which was dope. I guess they just saw her in my corner. They figured they heard the story. They just put the sort of child in the third round. Um, 13 or 14, well, I don't know how old I am. And the crowd's mama's boy, mama's boy. And this is the most Aww. amazing feeling ever. So I went to fight and I tell her, like, this is dope. Let's keep doing this. <laughs> and, um, That's so cute. It kind of it still was like an unofficial thing, but like, we're still looking for a trainer. But, and so we never like officially made it a, a thing, but it just kept going. And it's still to this day, like, it's crazy. We've never officially shook on. Really? Hey, you're you're, you're Put them on some paperwork and get all you your money. Like, yep. There's no contract. There's no nothing. Like, I pay her after the fight. I pay her a percentage. Sometimes. Then, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. I, I, have written, I have it written down, though. There you go. Yeah, yeah, you no sound like of... my mom. <laughs> you still owe me yeah, yeah, she's a ledger really from 1987. No. She really does that. Yes. She really does that. As like, she should. And you right. treat it as a business. Like the gym, Because we know we have our business now. And the business does well when the business takes money. And I look in the account and money would just be gone. <laughs> Mama is allowed to. She'll yes. be like, she'll be like, um, I'll just take that off the tab. <laughs> period. As you should. Period. I like that. Period. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you ever envision that you would be a trainer to a boxer, n none less than your son? I can't say I did. No. Really? No, I never saw that. I don't think anybody says if you told me at 34 I'm gonna be boxing, my mom's gonna be my coach. If you told me this when I was like 12 or 16, even I'd have been like, mm, nah. that's dope. Nobody's gonna ride for you like your mother. Yeah, I, ride for yeah. You. I think about that's my own mom. Fight. She would who ride. So this is interesting to me because you have siblings. It's not just the two of you. Yes, it's one. It's one thing to take your kids to a lesson to soccer whatever your kids are into it's a different huge time commitment to be a trainer be in the gym daily how does that work with your other siblings and the support system because you are consuming a lot of their mother because i get on my siblings all the time like look can i kick it with my mom please it's tough it's the old other transfer. it is but like he said we have a very close-knit family like most of my family that were in jersey or um in brooklyn and jersey moved out here with us Oh. So we're, oh, we're okay. my daughter's out here, my sister's Are out here. Are they close in age with you? Your yeah, my sister has me by like um. Thirty. She's, just, she's eight. Thirty-eight. She's okay. thirty-eight. She's, she's 30. forty. She just turned forty. No, she's thirty. Forty and fabulous. Hey, she's come on. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Over forty. She's, 30, she's thirty-eight. Yeah. She's thirty-eight, and my little brother is seven years younger than me. So we're kind of spread out, but um, we were always close. We were That's really good. Close, yeah. Okay. My youngest son is in Ohio State. Oh, he's okay. in Ohio. I don't know when he's going to finish. The Thanks. Ohio State <laughs> University does yes, he do that. Yes, the, the Buckeyes. Buckeyes. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a career student. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's, it's all right. Five positive. years, seven years, <laughs> six Whatever years. It it's fine. He might yes. want to be a professor. So going back to what you were saying, when your earliest memory, there was a girl who you liked, boy, tried to beat you up. Then you went to the gym, and there was a guy you were competing against. So when did the mindset shift to finding the motivation from within and not from other people when to motivate you. When I saw you. Roy Jones versus, who was that guy's name? Dang, I, I forgot. He came out with a tuxedo? Yes, the fight where he fought on Radio Music City Hall. He came with the tuxedo outfit on Red, Red Man and Method Man. Oh, oh my God, I just watched that. So the backstory behind that is the guy that he fought trained in Glees in his gym. So I watched him train. I wasn't really a boxing fan, but I watched this guy train. He trained pretty hard to me. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know who this Roy Jones is. That child. Bro. Yeah. But this guy, David Telesco. Damn, that's Telesco, him. yes. David Telesco. I was like, I don't know which I know about this Roy Jones guy, but I know David. And David is about to trash this Roy Jones guy. <laughs> and so, so I was like, You so, know we have him next today. He's our guest today. He's our third guest today. That's so funny. <laughs> that's awesome. So, so 
This is the fight I'm really excited to watch. The first because my parents been watching boxing, but I and I would be in the house, but I wasn't paying attention. But this fight, David Telesco about to beat upset the world and beat this Roy Jones kid. I'm gonna watch this fight. So we get home, you watching the fight. The fight takes forever to come over. Roy Jones is running late because Redman and Memphis Man aren't there. The I'm, like, was high. I'm, like, I'm like, who is this diva? Like, why is he taking so long? <laughs> then he comes out with a tuxedo on Redman and Man. The, the walkout is, is amazing to me. I love it. I love his energy. Then he gets in the ring and he destroys David. And I'm like, wow, there really is levels to this. I thought this David guy was so good. <laughs> but, now you see someone much and now, better. So I said to her, I see to her, I was like, I really want to be. I really want to box now. I really want to do this. Like, I didn't realize, like, it's so much entertainment value to this. Like, and I'm an entertainer. I'm a performer. I want to walk out with Red Man and Meth Man <laughs> dancing. From, I want to do this. And I think I was about 14 at that time. Did you watch fights beforehand since you've never seen anyone like Roy in the ring? Since you know that you really discovered that yes, there were I, levels? So, so, like I said, because my, fans, my family were always big boxing fans. So, they have fight parties for, like, um... Trinidad, De La Hoya, and um, all those fights coming up, all of my Tyson fights, we had fight parties. So um, I've been around that boxing energy. I'm, I still remember the the Tyson versus who's the guy from the white guy that kept hitting him low blow. Or the, there's a guy that I remember when my dad went to the bathroom and he came out and he missed the fight. Like the, uh. the fight was that bad. That's not that's how Tyson fights were. Yeah. So. Um, I remember we always had fight parties, but but what really, was it about Roy that was like wow? Besides, the, you the saw entertainment value. I think Got that's it. what okay. it was. The whole the 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 come out the wing the ring walk the outfit his flashiness his dancing him taunting yeah. that energy and it was my first time seeing a black man doing that. Like, yeah. like, I saw Tyson like roll out, but that wasn't as come out with a tiger. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't as exciting to me as what Roy Jones just did. What I saw Roy Jones do. So that's what I want to do. I didn't really want to knock people out. I wanted to stunt on people and like look like Roy Jones did. So Roy Jones became my biggest influence then, and that's when I decided I wanted to really be a boxer. Okay. Have you had conversation? Have you ever met him? Or I did. I did. I did. I told him this too. I don't know if he remembers that, but this was a while ago. Um. At a pro fight, actually. In Philly. And was it Philly? Oh, yeah. That's when Philly. I met Boots for the first time, too. Yep. Oh, wow. And, um, and the, funny, the funny thing about Boots told me, too, when Boots had just turned pro, or was getting ready to turn pro, and I didn't know who he was yet. And he was like, Mama's boy, I like you. He was like, I need you to hurry up and get that title, because if you don't get it soon, you're going to be fighting on my undercards. Oh. oh. And I was, like, oh. I, was like, I was like, who is this kid? <laughs> wow. And sure enough, Boots for the next fight put me on the undercard, bro. <laughs> I love that. But, uh, wow. See, man, I wish we knew this. Man, we should have swapped this and had yeah. boots this week and had you well, last week. So well, you know, we're going to be bringing this up to Roy today. That's awesome. But, man, about you? We got to get some lotto tickets. Yeah. Look at how they all intersected. Wow. So now you're watching him undergo this transformation from kid in the gym to really wanting to take it seriously. Did you believe that he wanted to take it seriously? Could you see the shift in him? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You could see the sh You could see the dedication. The laziness was getting better. He was still lazy, but it was levels to the laziness that was developing. He loved it. He was um, doing more research. Okay. So it was those little things that you can see. You know, he was um, running, and he was running without being told to run. Mm. He was watching other boxers, um, seeing what they do. He was, he was just learning the craft. So that's when I knew he was serious because he was putting his stuff out there to try to figure, figure stuff out. And we were learning together, too. So that was good. Wait, oh, okay. go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. No, go ahead, I was going to say, with when you have, now that you're, you're, well, your mother is your trainer, and you have a daughter. Can your daughter box? Two daughters. You have two daughters. Can two they daughters. box? Um, No. So they're five and six months. So my five-year-old, I'm teaching her a little bit. She wants to learn, but she's not the fighter. She's my lover. Like, I don't uh, see her ever competing. If she wants to, though, I'm with it. But she does dance, and she, she wants to do that. But she just loves boxing because she loves doing stuff that I do. My little one, my six-month-old, that's the fighter. Like, I see it already. Like, she's going to... She's she took that special. ear piercing like a champ. That's a fact. Oh, you saw... Oh, okay. I saw that. Okay, she yeah. was like, she, ah! She doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't cry. I'm serious. At six months, I think this girl's cried with tears in her eyes maybe four times. Wow. wow. Maybe four times. Wow. But she does not cry. She's... She, I cannot wait to see what she does. Like, she's going to be lit. I'm excited. You're a grandma. Grandma, right? Grandma, you like it. You do. I do. I love it. To two girls, would two you want girls. them fighting also? No. Really? Oh. No, I wouldn't. Why? 
I don't know. I just think there's so many other things that they can do. Mm-hmm. I just don't want them to box. If they say, Grandma, I want a box. Then they're going to box. And they want you to be in the corner. Then I'll be in the corner. Oh, it's a little family affair. How Wouldn't cute. that be interesting? Um, that would be interesting. I think that's going to be dope. I think that's going to happen, honestly. Yeah, you be in the corner, cut man. <laughs> you be something. Be like, I cannot. Stop, no. Dad. Grandma's <laughs> talking to me. <laughs> One voice. <laughs> One voice in the I'm corner. I'm going to put this out here right now. On the best woman boxing show ever, I'm going to put that Period. 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 Oh, the period is there. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna put that there. My daughter Elijah, who is six months, old, is going to be the best fighter in the world. Oh, Not just boxing. Period. The best fighter in the world. She's going to okay. be the best. What uh, wait? What weight class do you think she'll end up? Uh, probably like around a one forty-seven. Okay, one forty-seven. Say less. Okay, okay. She Jessica knows. McCaskill. I know. <laughs> She's coming for your belt. The heir apparent, <laughs> the undisputed champ, Jessica McCaskill. You you hear it right here. Shout out to Jessica. Shout out to women's boxing in general. Period. Like what you guys are doing with the sport, making it more relevant. I think the, um, the Serrano Taylor fight was ridiculous. Crazy. Yep. Um, I love the energy that. Clarissa is putting in the box now. At first, when Clarissa turned pro, I felt like she still had a, somewhat of a chip on her shoulder. She was very aggressive, and I didn't really like her energy. Even me and her had like a little fallout because she was cool with Anthony Durrell. I didn't like him at the time. She said something on Twitter. And it was interesting because she's been a fan of her. So I didn't know how to respond because I want to respond like, who are you talking to? But I'm still a fan. Yeah. So it was weird. But um, we did it that. Clarissa's great. And I think also I watched her change as a person. Like She's a lot more welcoming yeah. she's more she's easier to talk to i think she you know love. for her with the chip on her shoulder is because no one gave credit to her yeah, right i mean she she's so a yes. very well super accoladed talented, female talented. exactly and it's the fact oh she's a female boxer who cares like she doesn't have the resume but you know what she's done what many people have not or her will never deeper, ever do deeper Crazy. than most yeah men. Now, um, do you watch? I, I, you, she just said. Uh, excuse me. He just said that you're a female f- or a fan of f- uh, Clarissa. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Do you watch any? Not really. Why is that? I'm just curious because a lot of people don't watch what women's boxing. For so. sure. I don't even. I don't, there's no real answer to that. I just don't. I just don't watch it. Okay. Um, are you familiar with Michaela Mayer and Alicia Baumgartner? Yes, I'm familiar with them because I train. Shout out I Alicia. train. A, I train a female. I train female. Oh. Fighters. Oh. Okay. Yes, I have a female fighter, Carla Hall. She's. Um, She's fighting. What's her name? Carla Hall. What's her first name? Carla. Carla. Oh, Carla. Carla Hall. Yes. Oh, Carla Hall. Okay. Yes. What? What? She uh, should be going pro by the end of this year. Very exciting. What? What? What weight class? One thirty-two. Okay. Yes. So I do um, like female boxing. I do appreciate it. Do you think you're gonna have to start watching more since now you have a female boxer in your under your? Probably. Window? Probably. Huh? Just I to think keep what's up happening with it. now for female boxing that's really good is they're creating more narratives, more storylines. I feel like before it was just because production or promotion didn't care about it. It was just here's the female fight. Yeah, right. right. And with no backstory, you don't know these women. So like they that's, struggle. They that's have what it was. way more struggles than men. They got kids. I agree. They got families. Like they switching yeah. up now. Yeah. And shout out to Jake Paul because Jake Paul yeah. is one of the this, the heads that that led this whole yeah. women's boxing with Serrano and and getting her story out there and putting the highlight on her. So shout out to Jake. Jake Paul has done a lot of positive things for boxing. I feel like he hasn't given enough credit for that. I hate him as a boxer. <laughs> Which we as, understand. I hate him yeah. as a boxer. But what he's doing for the actual sport is great. Like how he put Amanda in that position. How he put um the kid from Ohio. I forgot his name. Um the pretty boy. What's his name? A kid from Ohio. He's a guy from Ohio. He's Montana Love. Oh, oh Montana yeah. Love. Love. Oh, yeah, with the dog. Yeah. Yeah, Montana Love. What he's doing, he's putting on real boxers. So he got, he took the spotlight and he didn't shine it on other YouTubers. He shined it on other boxers. And you got to respect that. I think, I mean, he had to because, I mean, credit to Lou DiBella because he's the one that had Amanda Serrano for years mm-hmm. and years. But uh, sadly, that. No, the world didn't really take to women's boxing. And then it took this YouTuber who had millions and millions of followers say, well, watch this person and then put him on the undercard and then give a part, a, a higher purse to their to these fighters yeah. underneath. And then knowing that Amanda was a seven division world champion, it's like she needs she needs more credit because mm-hmm. this this female has done so much. And then you have Katie Taylor, who is a huge so mega good. star in the so UK. Good. And they put on one of the best fights, undisputed fights from the beginning to end. That was just like mind blowing to all I, of us. It, it, it topped 
the night of Oscar Valdez versus Shakur Stevenson. Well, yeah. I'm a big Shakur fan, so I still love that fight. But it I was get, a good fight. But I get what you're saying. But it, like as one was very technical it, versus yeah. a, 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 a brawl. Watch, yeah. A great fight to watch. I yeah. agree. I, agree. I mean, we will, Oscar wanted to get in that fire fight. It's almost like Devin Haney versus Cambosos. Cambosos wanted that fire fight. Shakur and Devin are like, nope, I'm just going to use my skills. Which is smart. Yeah, which is great. Smart. Which I think, you know, people who don't like technical fights are going to be bored. But for people who really understand the craft of it, it's like, damn, that was a very smart move. <laughs> shit, I'd box yeah. the shit out of him too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the dynamic of boxing is so interesting right now because I feel like we're losing so much of the art, the actual skill. So the fighters that do have that skill are going to start standing out a lot because there's a lot of people entering boxing because of the YouTubers mm -hmm. that think that they could just jump in and, and, yeah. and get a run-in-the-mill train and hit the pads, learn a little choreography pads, and they can fight. So the people that have the skills, like the Shakurs, um, Keyshawn Davis, yeah. Mm -hmm. Boots, yeah. Yeah. like those fighters are going to really shine. So I'm excited to see what, hap what happens to boxing in the next couple of years. I think it's in a great place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that we needed Jake Paul to kind of uh, upset Shakes. the, app yeah. Yeah, did, upset the apple cart. You needed a younger person with a little bit more insight. With a loud mouth. With a loud mouth. Doesn't give a shit. Can on the pulse. <laughs> exactly. You <know? laughs> and, you know, ultimately it's great PR for him, too, because he's putting women on and is a champion for women. So it was a win-win for everybody. Yeah, yeah, boxing. And not only that, he's helped me in my business. Like I said, like you guys know, I own a gym. Yeah. Yeah. And What's the, the name of it? 3D Boxing and Fitness. I call it 3D Boxing and Fitness. Oh, so you guys temple. own it. I didn't know this. Yes, okay, very good. We 3D Boxing and Fitness Temple. Because of the interest that Jake Paul has brought to boxing for people that I never thought about boxing, like YouTubers, gamers, yeah. stuff like that. Now I'm getting so much of these kids coming in that probably would never be in the gym. Kids that hate gyms God, are now cool. boxing. So because of Jake Paul and his YouTube boxing era, like it's, it's really beneficial to real boxers if you know how to capitalize off of the, the demographic. If you want to watch it and complain about it, you're going to miss the ride. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like Jake Paul changed it, but... If you were able to make the adjustments like a lot of great fighters have been able to do, um, it's been great because now he's he's made he made Triller a thing. Yeah. And um these random networks broadcasting fights, social media is broadcast. I think that all comes from Jake Paul and him getting those kind of people involved. So shout out to him for that. Safai, if you could go back, you're a fan of boxing, longtime fan of boxing. If you could pull out any fighter from history and train him for one fight. Who would you want to train for one Your fight? Your questions are fire. I told you, she's <laughs> so good. Fire. Pronell. Oh, Whitaker, nice. I love his style. Oh, rest in peace. I know. I always, loved peace. always loved his style. Always loved his style. Pronell is a beast. Yes, I always loved his style. I always wanted to fight like him, but I'm not. I'm, I but just you're not him. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, I'm, always, I'm more of a Marvin Hagler than Pronell. Yeah? Is that, do you agree with him? It's not the Pernell, I know that. I agree with that. <laughs> Yes, that oh. man was technically sound. Yeah, he was. Yeah, so I would love to train him. See, I feel like in my personal opinion, I have the technical um, knowledge to move that technical, but I want to fight. Like, I want to exactly. fight. And it's you something. can't always fight. No, it's not, gotta be and it's not necessary. Smart. It's yeah, not necessary. Yeah, just like Floyd said, you know, uh, the whole purpose is not to get hit. Right. Mm. Well, <laughs> I, you want to get in a firefight, which I totally understand because I get you want, you like knockouts. You yeah. like, do you like to no, go for the actually, knockout? No, actually, I don't like knockouts. I like what Tank just said, which is very interesting. I want to beat you till your corner stops it or the referee stops it or yeah. you quit. Ooh. I don't really want to knock you out, though. I don't want to knock you out because you could get hurt down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is called boxing. <laughs> no, I don't, don't want to hurt anybody. Like, my goal with boxing, I've heard, heard fighters say it too, like, they don't care about killing people. I don't want to kill anybody. Oh, yeah. I hate it when people say that. I don't want to I don't Bodies, wanna seriously hurt anybody. Like, I just want to beat you. I just want to be better than you. I just want to yeah. beat you till you know that you can't beat me and your corner calls it a day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think those are the best because ain't no reason for no rematch, ain't no running it back. Your corner quit. Your, that man in that corner saved your life. That's the best, in my opinion. You know, Safai, you know, he just said that, um, you know, uh, we don't we don't like to hear when other fighters say, we want you in a body bag or I'm going to kill you, blah, blah, blah. I'll die in the ring. Your, your mother is still first. That's oh, absolutely. your first job. When he's going in that ring, does that fear still, in, is it still instilled mm. in you that, oh, shit, my son is in the ring? You have to, obviously, you have to put the mother hat and then the trainer hat on. How do you, um, how do you switch gears like that? 
the mm-hmm. nerves are still there. Yeah. Yes. From from the, from day one till now, the nerves are st- is still there. I just try not to show it because yeah. if I show it, then he's gonna feed off that energy. Yeah. So yeah, I try to suppress it. And I keep trying to explain that to her because we are so connected that I feel how she feels, and I, that's why I tell her it's so important to. Her. How stay she calm. stay calm yeah. in the corner because when she's tight in the corner, it's like dead ass. Then I'm tense. <laughs> I'm tense in the ring, like no, I'm all calm. So when she's relaxed, and she's having fun in the corner. I'm able to relax. So I'm trying to. We're working on that. It's, it's such a, it's such a beautiful journey that we're going on because we're doing this together. The yeah. same way she just said, um, the same way you guys said, what, what you guys had referenced earlier was that. I feel like I have a, sh- a chip on my shoulder because I have my mom in my corner, so I have to beat people up for real, for real. So you know, don't 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 laugh at me. She feels the same way being a mom, being a woman in the corner. And she has to feel like so. I feel like for a while, that's why she was extra tough to me because she had to be tougher than the men mm-hmm. to prove. The, you know what I'm saying? Like, but we're at the point where the same way she tells me, they know you already. So calm down. Like you don't have to do it. Like, you don't got nothing to prove. That's how I gotta tell her. They know you already. Calm down. You don't got nothing to prove. <laughs> so we both gotta learn over each other and co- we coach each. Other. I have to coach her on how to coach me sometimes. Like, don't yell at me, lady. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's 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 the same thing. Even when uh, there's uh, fighters and trainers, whether they're their father, son, or uncle, whatever. When I see a trainer yelling at the fighter, I'm like, that's not gonna do any good. Exactly. It's like, dude, you gotta talk to me like Andre Rosier. It's like poetry that comes out of his Andre, mouth. Shout out to Andre. Andre oh, I dope. call him Andre Rosier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he, it's just the way, it's so eloquent, the way he says, I'm like, damn, I wish he could just say beat the fucking shit out of him. Yeah. But he says it in such a beautiful, delicate way. I don't think mm-hmm. I ever heard him raise his voice. Andre, never, Andre, never. Andre Rosier yeah, more Virgil one of the Hunter. best yeah. trainers I've ever been around. Like yeah. to be around and just soak up information, so soak up how he coaches. Andre Rosé is one of them. Yeah, he's one of. He's yeah. just a warm person he in really general. Is. He has good energy. Or even, excuse me, or even like Virgil Hunter. I used to. I was always so tickled on Twitter when, you're like, With those gifted hands, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Out there and fight. Yep. <laughs> Can you hear me, Andre? <laughs> Go out there. And it's like what you say first. Yeah. Like, no way. It's like, yes. I was like, can they even hear you? Because it's so like quiet. I'm like, everyone's screaming. We're like, huh? Yeah. Speaking of which, did you know Angulo was coming back? Yeah, because he's fighting for Wonga. <laughs> Why? Oh, I'm, I fear. I know. Him. We're gonna be Why? interviewing Edgar uh, late uh, next. Oh no. What do you after? guys think about Edgar? I didn't like his last fight. I did not like it. I we've said it. We he needs to be tested. He needs to be tested because we know that he's young and he's he, he has those early knockouts. But none of those fights really proved anything to him or like us. I feel like he's a victim of his own success. Because, mm. because, no, yeah. because he was so successful so fast, they put him on a pedestal. Of course. And he wasn't ready There's a yet. lot of fighters like yeah, that. He so. wasn't ready yet. Because I think he's good, but he's not as good as they think he is. Yeah. He's not there yet. He just needs to be tested. Yeah, he needs more time yeah. to develop. Yeah. But they're rushing. Now. They, I heard him somebody talking about Berlinga and Benavidez. No way. Bro. Oh, yeah. I remember no. he called him out. I was like, no, sweetie, no sit way. down. <laughs> <laughs> no And I mean, I like, I like them both. Berlinga is still very young. Mm-hmm. I think he can do very, very well. But he, he just, just needs, needs more time. He needs more time. Um, and it's hard because when you have a whole country and then New York behind you and then all of the celebrities like uh, Fat Joe yeah Fat Joe all of them you know putting you on a pedestal of course you're going to want to perform and outshine and say yes I'm the I'm the next big thing but you can be the next big thing so. it'll, it'll see what happens because his last four fights all went to decision or last three fights yeah. went to decision yeah. and it's kind of his his career is predicated on being a knockout artist. But it was like that with Keith Thurman, too. Yeah. Keith Thurman was knocking out people for a long time. And then, you know, as the levels change. I, you know, change, he I can like, really. I feel like Keith Thurman's level change, we all saw the level change. So we understood it. Yeah. With Berlinga, we're not really seeing the level change. It's like Unless... slightly better. And you're doing a lot different. Now. Well, unless he comes out with Angulo. Because <clears throat> Angulo, we know he's. He likes to knock out. I mean, he's he's a brawler. He's not. If if Berlanga is able to just somehow box him all of a sudden and show his boxing skills to show he's a very well-rounded fighter as opposed to just a straight knock, knockout artist, then we'll see a little bit of level changes in him. I feel like, in my personal opinion, I think this is a terrible fight for Belonga because, like, you're in a no-win situation. If you knock out Angulo, yeah. anybody's like, you knocked out an old dog. You know what I'm saying? If you go to war with Angulo, they're like, you went to war with an yeah. old dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're in a, you're in a no-win situation. Where, but shout-out to Belonga. I do like him as a fighter. I do, too. I like so. him as a fighter. Shout-out to him. Yeah. yeah, we're going to have a good chat with him and see what's up. I know. So we are, wow. 
Wow. I know, time has flown. So we have this segment that we call Talk Your Shit, and uh, your camera is over there. Oh so you have 30 seconds to She gets to, to do one, too. The, oh, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna I do, do it one, to too. You have 30 seconds. This is a grown people show. You can look into that camera. So then... Go ahead and talk your shit. Talk for me too. Listen, <laughs> right, listen, listen. If anybody's been following following my career, you guys understand I was an alcoholic. I went through a lot of stuff. And um I found God, changed my life, got my babies. I'm ready for whoever. So I wanna be the first fighter that fights everybody that be him. So I'm letting y'all all know Ammo Williams, I'm coming for you. Ooh. Benavidez, I'm Ooh. coming for you. Shout out to you, Benavidez. I love you, bro. I'm coming for you. <laughs> Jamel Charlo, shout out to you too. I'm coming for you. Um, Darrell, you about to get your old behind the body here. But if you stay here longer, I'm coming for you too. George Groves, you retired. Shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I'm here. I want to fight everybody. I want to fight the best. And there's no games. There's no gimmicks. There's no funny stuff with me. Like, I want to run the all back. So, Ammo. Me and you was just talking last week. I'm putting it out there. I like Ammo for you. I love Ammo for me, too. Ammo, you know what it is, bro. Run it back. Run it back. <laughs> Shout out to you, though. Congrats on all your success. You look great against um Cordell. You look great against Cash. You're doing great. I'm proud of everything you're doing. But I want it back, bro. Benavidez, shout out to you. I want it back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bombs. So and now know. your camera your is on that time. Sophia. You know, hold it down for the women out there, for the trainers, for all the punk ass people who were short minded <laughs> and didn't think women could be in the corner. You got this formidable young pro in front of you that you have brought from the cradle, literally, Love to her. where he is now. So, moms, go ahead, talk your shit. I'm not going to talk any shit. I'm just <laughs> I'm just going to say shout out to the best women boxing show, period. Aww. Thank you for having us on the show. I really, really appreciate it. I didn't really understand what it was going to be. I would have looked a little bit better. My no, son always fine. Well, you my son fine. always puts me on the point where he leaves out a lot of information. <laughs> it has me looking. That's why I have my glasses on because one of my lashes is coming off. Oh, I have lash glue if you need it. <laughs> but shout out to um, you guys for having us on the show. I really, really, truly appreciate it. And to all the promoters out there, please give him a chance. Aww. Give him another shot. He is going to be a world title holder before he before he retires. I don't know that's right. All yeah. he needs is a shot. That's all he needs is a chance. He's a different person now. He's a different man now. He's a different fighter now, except for last week when he got beat up. <laughs> 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 but other, other than that, all we need is a shot. I know that's right. I love how sparring. To all the women in boxing. Woo! Represent, represent. Well, Sorry, I don't watch it enough because back in the days, I didn't like women boxing because of how they box. <laughs> mm, that's but, why. That's yeah. why I like Shields because she was the first female boxer that I saw. Besides, back in the days, coal miner's daughter. And I want to tell how old I am, <laughs> but she boxed. She looked like. Uh, like just like how the men box. Yeah. But before it used to be that girl scratching type yeah. of fighting mm -hmm. that just looked ridiculous. That's why I didn't like watch it. Well, Let's go back to, to that. that was salute good. to the women. Yes. Salute to you. That was Thank pretty you. good for somebody who wasn't going to talk no shit. That was pretty <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Thank you, guys. Oh, you guys are great. Shout out to Ashley because that's Sophia's yes, trainer. I'm Ashley. so happy. Mm -hmm. um, but again, uh, you know, can you give a plug of your gym so exactly. people in Vegas or if you're coming to a train in Vegas or work out or visit, you got to visit have their a gym. camp. Yes. Yeah, Anything. have a camp. Yes, please listen to this. This is 3D boxing and fitness gym. We are the best gym in Vegas. And I don't say, I say that humbly because of the passion that we put into it. Not because I think I know anything more than anybody else, but just because of my passion for every single person that comes in our gym. I want to see you become the best version of yourself. And um, I feel like with that kind of love and care, you're gonna get the best out of it. So um, and you'll get Sophia. Yeah, and it's real boxing, but without the intimidation factor. You can learn how to box without the fear of getting beat up or going home with a black guy. It's not cardio boxing where you're just punching the bag. Every day you're gonna come to the gym. You're gonna get better. Like today, when I get to the gym today, we're working on pivoting on our hooks and on mm. check hooks. Oh, that. so that's working on that today. So we have a game plan for every single lesson. I'm also a physical therapist, so I do something called stretch foliation, which will guarantee make you feel it's like a body reset <gasps> make somebody that's feel dope. Yeah, yeah, that's very, dope. very very so, little um, trainers very do good. that mm -hmm. yeah so um i'm really passionate about this it's, it's dope to be so passionate about this and have the passion for fighting as well so i'm still want to be a world champion but i still want i want the best gym in the world then i want to be a, a referee i want to be a boxing promoter a boxing manager a judge speak it I, I just manifest love, it I love, manifest that i'm out. mr boxing you guys are interviewing mr boxing right now so <laughs> 
And Mr. Rapper, you said you had a hot oh, 16 before Rapper. we wrap. Yeah, rap. drop it. Listen, uh -oh. hey, yo, look. Oh, oh, Jay can drop in, too. Oh, no. Oh! No, no, no. Travis, give us a give beat. Give us a beat, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> It's mama's boy. He got a I beat for you. Oh, you got a beat too? Oh, yeah. yeah do, There's no ahead. way. I can't. No, Come on, Travis. Travis. I can't keep time. Okay. Yes, you can. All right, no, wait, here, are you ready? Okay. It's mama's boy. I know you remember me, man. I hold twin revolvers like I'm Yosemite Sam. I ride with that four or five. But I don't drive an infinity, man. I'm that guy y'all pretend to be, man. That's why if I take a shot, it's not going to be Hennessy, man. I pine box on my enemies, man. Damn. I can't let it slide right around petrified, letting them decide when they going to try to come test the odds. F that, man. I made the guy exercise, and you could be next to die. You better recognize. That's it. That's it. I'm go, Jay. Go, Jay. Go, Jay. Go, Jay. Go, Jay. Oh, Jay ain't got, you that, know, that, that was too bad. many syllabic <laughs> words. I don't have any. Check my ad libs. Yeah. Oh, that was so great, guys. Oh, what a great way to end this interview. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming in. I appreciate in. you guys having us on. This was dope. This it was, was fun. Pleasure. I told y'all. I told y'all this, this was going to be fun. And I'm glad that you didn't really understand and know. And I'm glad that you really enjoyed your time at the Brown Table Talk with I us. I sure <laughs> did. I sure did. We keep it all brown over here. We're right? going to have to come visit you. Yes, Jay, please. we're getting in the I'm ring with Sophia. I'm going to come over there and learn how to pivot. 777 yeah, Dean Martin Drive. Dean Martin and, and just so everybody knows too, that rap wasn't mine. I made that up. I mean, I, I stole someone else's rap. If you, <laughs> what? If, if, if you know who that was, comment on the We're bottom. We're gonna get copyrighted. <laughs> put it in the comments. Comment on the bottom who that was. I'm gonna send somebody. If you know who it was, I'm gonna send you something. So a me, check. <laughs> My God, I'm we're gonna, gonna get a copyright. Check on us. You get a mom's boy too. That is. <laughs> all right, take a oh, time. All right. Well, again, thank you, Dennis, and thank you, Mama Sophia Douglas, for joining us in the studio at the Best Women's Boxing Show. Period. Giandra, once again, this was a fun. I was I was really hoping you're gonna throw some bars down. Yeah, I want to hear some. Oh. I gotta keep. I gotta, you know, keep. Sipping first, and then uh, you're, like, you're gonna have to watch our boots interview because that's where she drops her magic. Oh, you gave boots bars, you're not giving me my now. Oh, no, my bars were terrible. <laughs> no, they, they were, were so good. They were so good. <laughs> but again, uh, thank you for joining us here for another episode of the Best Women's Boxing Show. Period. Make tune into all of our episodes on YouTube, uh, everything else, Instagram, our TikTok, our socials. Like, share, subscribe because we're almost at a thousand we're so we can go there. live. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do All it. right, again, thank you again. I am Cynthia Conte. And I'm Giandra LaBeouf. See you guys at the fights. Bye, guys.